have to start, my name is PK, and I went to the bathroom. I didn't have to go to the bathroom, I just wanted to be alone for a minute. <laughs> and I talked to myself, I didn't know there was anybody next door. And I said, you can do this, you can do this, just try harder. <laughs> more than once. <laughs> oh, God. So, um, I'm a virgin at this, and um, <laughs> I'm really scared, and I forget everything, like the woman who with the hail coming in, driving, doing, uh, everything left, everything's gone. So, Lisa, what's my first line? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know I'm not allowed to cheat. Um, crap. You got this. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, the bell. That's not a bell. That's a gong. Um, I, I, oh, okay. All right. Some, some, this is really time warped. Some, Some people called what I was in a relationship. Some people called what I was in dating a nun. And some people called what I was involved in um, sinful and disgusting. And some people knew it was sexual abuse. I did not know it was sexual abuse. Um, she was 36, I was 15. I did not know. Um, so as things evolved in my life, um, I became um, confused is a good word. And uh, as I realized what happened there and didn't know what to do about it and nobody was talking about it, I found out that whenever anybody got married in Bergen County, New Jersey, which is where I was from, she would go to the wedding. And this is before, you know, whatever, you know, social media, Facebook, Telephones. This is before everything. You'd read the newspaper. Somebody's getting married, and everybody would, you know. So whenever Patricia Cahill got married, she'd go to the wedding, un unannounced, uninvited. Found out later. It was before the word stalking existed. She was a pedophile nun, obviously, and I didn't know. And I did. I, I'm in recovery. Uh, she introduced me to sex and drugs, and and alcohol, and um, when I got away, I realized I was, you know, heavy into addiction, so I, um, you know, did what I had to do with 12-step rooms and get my act together, and as any good alcoholic, if there's any good alcoholics in here or recovery people in here, you know what a geographical cure means. And I mean, you know, well, I'll stop drinking, or I'll change to beer, or I'll start with beer, or I'll smoke a crack pipe, I'll do anything to, you know, whatever. Geographical cure, move from this area to that area, leave the problem behind you, don't work on the issues, just keep on moving. I moved, I moved um, 3,900 miles away because moving to Pennsylvania from New Jersey wasn't good enough, so I moved 3,900 miles away to a teaching position in Germany because I didn't think that pedophile nuns could cross the ocean and stalk you at weddings. Um, I thought I was safe. So I made the move, did my, did my thing, had a great time. Um, the only problem is that I, when I packed to go, I packed all of my denial, all of my fear, all of my shame, all of my, I don't know, fill in the blank. Um, secrets, oh my God, secrets. I packed them all, you know, along with my, you know, silverware and my bed and my clothes, and I carried them across the ocean. And I um, stayed there hiding for four years, and I thought I was all better, because I was still in recovery, so I was all better. So I came back, still in recovery, and um, but when I, I moved to Germany, I mean, the kind of weird part is I lived on a street called Sigmund Freudstrasse. And that's true. I swear <laughs> to God, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I loved to write my address. You know, I was like, oh my God, I live on Sigmund Freudstrasse. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in Germany, and, um, and I'm trying to get to um, a recovery meeting um, in a green BMW that I bought. But to get to, I just cracked my knuckles. To get to um, 
a recovery meeting that speaks English in Germany in 1983, you had to get on the Autobahn. And um, you talk about fucking fast forward. That. <laughs> <laughs> There are no two car accidents on the Autobahn. There are 22 car smash ups where people die. Oh shit, the gong. I'm sorry. That was offensive. Um, so I'm going down the Autobahn. They're speeding by me 140 miles an hour. I'm going 75 and thinking I am one cool dude, dude. I love the guy that said, dude, dude. I was so cool, 75 miles an hour. They're going to kill me. I'm trying to get off. I go to the Ein, I don't know, I used to speak German well. The Ein, um, and, uh, the, and I asked for directions because I knew how to say I'm lost. But I didn't know how to listen to when they told me how to get unlost. <laughs> it didn't work yet, so I'm still lost. And I get on the Autobahn, I'm trying to get to Heidelberg to get to an English-speaking meeting at Rhein-Main, and I keep going past these, they said, just drive, Gerada House, and then Rinks. I'm like, Gerada House yourself and Rinks? I don't know where I am. I'm petrified, I'm alone, I'm in a green BMW. I'm like going 75 miles an hour, thinking I'm cool. I'm trying to get off at the cutoff, but it doesn't say Heidelberg, and they told me it would. It said Ausfart. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Back to the bathroom story. And I, um, I, I'm, I passed it. And I went to the next one, I'm like, I gotta go, I'm gonna be, and it said Ausfart again, and I'm like, what the hell? And the third one, five miles down the road, said Ausfart, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I thought it was a Heidelberg. Ausfart means exit. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> Thank you for the Adderall, wherever you are, and thank you very much. Woo!